Welcome to Adobe Animate Basics, a series of short videos where you'll learn the basic skills that you need to start animating in Adobe Animate. Now I know that learning a new piece of software can be boring and frustrating, especially when you just want to start animating. So I've tried to keep these videos as short and simple as I can. In this first video, I'll show you how to move around your workspace and we'll also take a look at basic drawing tools like the brush tool and the paint bucket. In the later videos, we'll learn how to create frame-by-frame -frame animations on the timeline using keyframes and layers. And then we'll also learn about symbols and tweens, which will make you a more efficient animator. With that said, let's head into Adobe Animate and start by creating a new project. The settings I'm using are 960 by 540 pixels with a frame rate of 24 frames per second and it will be an action script 3 document. If you want to know why I've chosen these settings, I've made an entire video on setting up an Adobe Animate project, so I'll leave a link to that in the description and on screen somewhere. But these settings work well for most projects, so if you want to, you can just set up your project in the same way. I'll click create, and you can see that we've now got this white stage area that we can draw on, surrounded by a bunch of buttons and menus. If your screen looks different, Click on the workspaces icon here in the top right and make sure you've got essential selected. This white space in the middle is called the stage and you can move around it by clicking and dragging while holding down spacebar. You can also zoom in and out by pressing command plus or command minus or you can use any of these zoom options here. On the right side of the stage is the properties panel which is important because it lets you change the settings of whatever tool you're using, like the color or size of your brush. At the moment, it's just showing us our project settings. For here, you can see the size, width and height, and the frames per second, or the color of our stage. But I'm going to go to the Tools panel on the left side and select the classic brush tool, this one right here, or using the shortcut B. And now with the classic brush tool selected, you can see that the Properties panel is showing settings for the brush. We'll be using the classic brush tool a lot, so let's take a look at its settings. Near the top of the properties panel, you see these five icons, and the two important ones that I wanna talk about today are the first one and the last one. This first icon turns object drawing mode on or off, and I wanna talk about it because it can be a bit confusing if you don't know what it does. When object drawing mode is turned on, as it is now, every line that you draw is going to be in its own separate group. And we don't need that right now, so to keep things simple, let's turn object drawing mode off. This icon all the way on the right turns pen pressure on or off. Right now it's off, so any lines you draw will be flat and uniform, but if you turn pen pressure on, you're going to get a tapered line that changes in thickness based on how hard you're pressing on your drawing tablet. Underneath those icons, you can change the color and opacity of your brush. And if you don't want to pick from the default color palette, this icon in the top right hand corner brings up a color picker, where you can choose your colors visually or by using the hex codes. Underneath color settings, you can change the shape or size of your brush. And you can also set the amount of smoothing that Adobe Animate will apply to your strokes. Let's zoom in to these lines we drew previously. We had smoothing at zero before, so these lines are quite wobbly and they have wiggly, jagged edges. Setting smoothing to 100, I'm gonna draw a line right next to it. Gross, sometimes Adobe Animate does that, but that's not what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to make a nice, smooth line like this one. And it works when you have pen pressure turned on as well like so. I usually have smoothing turned up pretty high. Um, zooming out and going back to the properties panel, the last setting we'll look at is this checkbox over here, zoom size with stage. I like to keep that turned on because when it's turned off, the size of your brush changes depending on how zoomed in or out you are, which doesn't really make sense. So keep that ticked all the time. All right, and now you know how to use the classic brush tool. I recommend that you draw some stuff and get familiar with the brush tool because it's a really important basic tool and you'll probably be using it a lot. Next, we'll take a look at the paint bucket, which is here in the tools panel on the left 
with a shortcut of K. It fills the space within a closed shape. So it's really useful for quickly coloring things in. Now notice that there's a gap in the lines over here. So the paint bucket is going to have trouble filling that in. Take a look at this icon in the top left of the properties panel. Over here I can tell the paint bucket to close gaps in my line work. That looks like a medium sized gap to me so I'm just gonna go close medium gaps and that can be useful sometimes. Another useful tool is the eyedropper which is right underneath the paint bucket in the tools panel and the eyedropper picks up whatever color your mouse is hovering above. So if I click here, I now have this salmon pink. Let's switch to the brush tool, turn off pen pressure and give him some blushies. Perfect. Going back to the tools panel, underneath the classic brush tool is the eraser tool which has similar settings to the classic brush tool. Okay, the last tool we'll look at is the selection tool right over here in the top of the tools panel or with the shortcut V and with the selection tool you can select things by clicking and dragging and with things selected if you click on the drawing you can move it or if you click delete you can delete it. You can also click on a color with the selection tool and it will only select that specific color so I've clicked on the color of the bunny's face and I can move his face out of his head. Same thing for any of these little bits of color. I'm selecting everything and I'm hitting delete and we're back to our blank white stage except now you know how to move around your stage, you know how to use the classic brush tool, the paint bucket tool, the eraser, the selection tool and the eyedropper. I hope that this video has helped and that you're now comfortable opening Adobe Animate and making little drawings. In the next video, I'll show you how to make frame by frame animations using the timeline. We'll learn about layers and how to use frames, keyframes, all that fun stuff. All right, thank you for watching and goodbye.